Few would have thought that a simple pharmacist would go on to start a distillery empire that would in later years make his family one of the richest in the world. Well, that is exactly what George Gavin Brown did. Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today we are going to talk about how the Brown family became so rich and how they spend their wealth. So let's begin. Born in September 1846 in Mumfordville, Kentucky, George Garvin Brown was raised with a strong sense of duty and determination. George Brown, the son of J.T.S. Brown and the half-brother of J.T.S. Brown Jr., was thrust into the role of head of the household at a young age when both of his parents enlisted in the Union Army to fight in the Civil War. George's willpower and ambition helped mold not only his destiny, but the whole whiskey business. George was transferred to Mail High School in Louisville, but had to drop out when his family fell on hard times. He dropped out of school six months before graduating because his family had difficulty providing him with consistent financial and emotional support. George's drive to success was undented, and he began working as a pharmaceutical sales agent while still in his teens. During this time period, George found himself selling a substance called medicinal whiskey. Distillers of the time tried to make spirits of excellent quality, but the sector had serious trust problems. Distillers typically sold barrels to middlemen, called rectifiers, rather than to end users. In order to enhance production and profits, these rectifiers would sometimes add prune juice, tobacco spit, water, or even iodine to the whiskey. Customers George dealt with during his sales contracts expressed widespread dissatisfaction with the final product. Due to the high cost of bottling whiskey in the 1860s and 1870s, rectifiers typically sold their product by the barrel. People would have to fill their jugs at convenience stores, bars, or pharmacies if they wanted whiskey. After experiencing personally the problems with whiskey's quality and consistency, George Brown made up his mind to do something about it. George was inspired to team up with his half-brother, J.T.S. Brown Jr., because of the latter's extensive understanding of the whiskey sector and his engagement with a small whiskey company. The two brothers joined forces to form J.T.S. Brown & Brother Company. In the beginning, they bought barrels from independent producers like J.M. Atherton Company and J.M. Mattingly Company, then carefully batched them to ensure uniformity. They bottled and sealed the whiskey to protect it and ensure its purity, and George's signature is prominently placed on the label. At first, the company targeted only medical professionals and pharmacies as potential buyers for their whiskey. J.T.S. Brown and Brother Company, on the other hand, rapidly grew their customer base because of their unwavering attention to producing consistently high-quality goods. Brown Foreman's history is marked by a number of pivotal moments and shifts that occurred as the company developed and expanded. One of the biggest moments was when George Garvin Brown renamed the brand after deciding that Old Brown did not belong on a bottle of whiskey. He renamed it Old Forrester to pay tribute to a famous doctor from Louisville, Dr. William Forrester. In 1872, George Foreman began working as a salesperson for J.T.S. Brown & Brother, but Foreman's responsibilities grew, and he finally became the company's bookkeeper and a partner along George Garvin Brown. Brown & Company became Brown Chambers & Company in 1873 when Henry Chambers had amassed a sizable stock holding in the firm. This change represented the expanding sway and sense of ownership inside the group. James Thompson became an employee in 1876. Three years later, Thompson & Foreman bolstered sales and distribution by forming a sales agency to represent Brown Chambers & Company after Henry Chambers resigned in 1881. The company changed its name once again this time to Brown, Thompson & Company. Foreman's efforts earned him a position as junior partner in the business. James Thompson, divested of his stake in the Glenmore Distillery in 1890, selling it to George Garvin Brown and George Foreman. Brown had gained 90% of the company, while Foreman had gained 10%. Because of this monumental change, the corporation is now known as Brown Foreman, a name that has stood the test of time. George Foreman passed away in 1901, and his widow later resold the company his shares. The company kept its name after the transfer of ownership. After acquiring the Ben Mattingly Distillery in 1902, the corporation changed its name to Brown Foreman Distillery Company. The Brown family has been involved with the company ever since George Garvin Brown's son, Owsley, started working there back in 1904. Owsley was instrumental in making the business a success. Owsley Brown took over the business after his father, George Garvin Brown, died in 1917. 
1920, he showed his economic prowess by obtaining one of just ten government permits to distribute, store, and brew whiskey for therapeutic purposes during Prohibition. While other distilleries closed their doors, Brown Foreman was able to keep running and save their old whiskey stock. Brown Foreman was ready for Prohibition to end, but the company ran into trouble when sales were fewer than predicted in 1934. Brown offered half of his shares to investors in exchange for funding. Old Kentucky Distillery, located in Louisville, was purchased by Brown Foreman in 1940 and is now home to Old Forester. The purchase furthered the firm's dedication to producing high-quality goods and increased its capacity. Brown Foreman bought the Lebro and Graham Distillery in 1941, transforming it into the Woodford Reserve Distillery the following year. However, the corporation briefly redirected its efforts towards the production of industrial alcohol to aid the war effort during World War II. In 1945, Brown established the Bluegrass Cooperage to meet the growing demand for barrels used in the production of Brown Foreman's whiskey. Brown Foreman first tried to acquire Jack Daniel's distillery in 1950, but the deal fell through. But in 1956, they were successful in their mission, becoming a major player in the American whiskey industry by purchasing the famous distillery. Lincoln Henderson began his illustrious 40-year term as a master distiller at Brown Foreman when he was hired in 1966, before retiring in 2006 to create Angel's Envy with his family. Henderson oversaw the production of all main brands inside the corporation, including Woodford Reserve. Brown Foreman sold the site to Lebro and Graham Distillery in the 1960s. However, the firm realized its importance and reacquired the land in 1993. The result was the 1996 opening of the Woodford Reserve Distillery and the launch of the Woodford Reserve brand. Well, all of this has allowed the Brown family to amass a net worth of around $20.4 billion, and they have put that money to some pretty good uses. But unluckily, we don't have the complete information about what their spendings are, so we can only make reasonable assumptions. Giving back to the community is one area where wealthy families like the Browns can make a real difference. The Brown Foreman family has amassed a great fortune, and a sizable percentage of that fortune was probably donated to worthy charities. Establishing endowments, giving generously to charities, and supporting causes in areas like education, healthcare, community building, and social justice are all examples of this. It's possible that the family's philanthropy goes beyond just giving money away. They might join nonprofits, serve on boards, and volunteer to have a more personal and substantial impact on the subjects they care about. The Browns may give more funding to causes that reflect their own beliefs and ideas. For example, they may give to arts and cultural organizations that help the underprivileged. The Brown Foreman's family fortune might also be used to fund commercial ventures. They might look for ways to spread out their money by investing in new, exciting businesses. These kind of investments can promote growth and innovation in addition to financial gain. One more common way that wealthy families invest their money is in real estate. Properties owned by the Brown Foreman family may include mansions, office buildings, and even underdeveloped plots of land. These real estate holdings offer the dual purpose of being investment vehicles and recreational resources. It is important to note that individual tastes, family dynamics, and long-term financial goals all play a role in the Brown Foreman family's discretionary spending habits. Their riches, however, are likely being put to good use through a combination of charity giving, company investments, personal endeavors, and careful estate preparation in order to leave a lasting legacy. So that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon on your way out. See you all next time.